The National Weather Service. Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here for Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. A uh, pretty good snowfall occurred here over the northern southeast coastal areas with uh, Haynes Customs picking up about 18 inches of snow and uh, downtown Haynes about 10 and a half inches while Haynes itself uh, picking up around 10 inches. Otherwise up to the north there Skagway picked up about 3 inches and this was uh, through early this morning, these totals. It uh, snowed throughout the day here across, uh, well, from Yakutat over to uh, into Haines to Juneau and northward to Skagway. So just adding to those amounts. On the satellite image, you can see all the moisture kind of uh, northwest flow here around the low pressure area over the northeast Gulf of Alaska, coming back around up from the south and southeast, bringing some good showers into the southern panhandle and then the areas of snow back up to the north and kind of a mixture in between there. Also uh, some clouds kind of pulling back to the west and northwest, spread some snow into the Copper River Basin today, mostly over the central and eastern areas there toward the Wrangell Mountains. Generally uh, pretty clear skies here, south central Alaska with light winds, but Seward still seeing winds gusting 30 to 40 miles an hour. Whittier westerlies 40 to 50 miles per hour, but uh, winds diminishing in those areas uh, throughout the afternoon hours. And otherwise, uh, north of the mountains of the Alaska Range, we had some uh, areas of uh, flurries here over the, uh, from eastern Norton Sound there in the Lado Hills out into the uh, lower and mid uh, Yukon River Valley area there, and also up over the central interior into the mid Tanana Valley, uh, clouds and some areas of light snow, but generally mostly cloudy skies here across the Koyukuk Valley. Bettles reporting a little light snow on out toward Kotzebue Sound, but then we had clear skies here along the northwest coast back across the western Brooks Range and North Slope. That's where the temperatures were the coldest today up in that area, running 15 to 30 below this afternoon. And then back uh, out to the west or to the southwest here, had a trough uh, right along the coastline, pushing gradually inland, mostly the stronger push in across Bristol Bay there. Snow showers all through this area, all the way back up to St. Lawrence Island. Winds uh, in advance of that trough southeast about 10 to 20 miles per hour, but Cape Newenham earlier today had a gust up around 48 miles an hour, again from the southeast with uh, pretty good snowfall in that area. More scattered snow showers along the Alaska Peninsula and some scattered rain and snow showers over the eastern Aleutians as that uh, band of moisture down to the south there shifts off to the southeast and back uh, to the northwest, a pretty good low pressure area there over the northwest Bering Sea with a lot of snow and snow shower activity there. That's pulling a lot of cold air down out of the Russian Far East into the west western Bering areas there. There's that low in the northeast Gulf of Alaska with the uh, trough bringing some isolated thunderstorms or widely scattered thunderstorms in along the southeast coast Dixon entrance uh, this morning. Mixture of rain or snow showers through the central panhandle and then mostly uh, snow there from about Juneau on up uh, along the Klondike Highway and then that snow shifting into the Copper River Basin from the southeast. Otherwise just some uh, scattered flurries here, Sparavon, a little bit of light snow and again as I mentioned up through the central interior areas, a little more widespread here in this area and even the eastern Arctic coast, uh, some areas picked up a little bit of fog and flurry conditions there, but pretty light winds, high pressure centered up over the uh, north slope there. So light wind conditions all across that area with the clear skies back through to the west and that's where the whiter uh, lighting of the satellite picture showing the colder surface temperatures at the, uh, well, at the ground. Otherwise down to the south, again, scattered rain and snow showers here over the Aleutians. And for tonight, we'll see that uh, trough kicks inland, so that's going to keep showers. Again, a risk of an isolated thunderstorm there along Prince of Wales Island this evening. Mostly snow showers up over the northern areas and the mixture there from, say, Skagway, Petersburg, westward to about Sitka to Port Alexander. You'll be in the mixed area there, again, with snow to the north and rain to the south. 
stays clear and cold, uh, low temperatures here, south central Alaska, or actually south of the Alaska range there, Susitna Valley, all the way down across the Kenai Peninsula, lows running 0 to 15 below tonight with light winds. Risk of some snow showers on the southwest side of Kodiak Island. Up to the north, high pressure, light winds, variable clouds all through the interior tonight with some areas of flurries, but nothing very significant at all. And then back out here over the Bering Sea, this low tracking southeastward there. So that's going to put the clouds and snow showers, pretty numerous snow showers there over the Pribilof Islands and then right up along to the southwest coast there with some scattered snow showers down across the eastern Aleutians. Colder air uh, spreading southward, so snowfall levels will be right down to sea level there from about Unalaska all the way out to Shimia and at two. And then looking ahead to tomorrow, we'll see that uh, low center continues to pull southeastward. And uh, the strongest winds here on the backside uh, swinging on around to the westerly gale force winds into the uh, eastern Aleutians tomorrow. Actually tonight there are storm warnings out over the western Bering Sea with this system as it pulls southward. But again, the strongest wind shifting off to the east with uh, a lot of snow here from the Alaska Peninsula across the eastern Aleutians all the way out to about Atka, becoming more showery toward Adak. And then uh, moderate snow showers here along the southwest coast there from Nunavik Island all the way across uh, Kuskokwim Bay down to the Alaska Peninsula with that trough. Uh, just uh, some variable clouds and isolated snow showers around Kodiak Island. Another sunny day here over south central interior or South Central Alaska in the Kenai Peninsula. Beautiful day coming up for Prince William Sound. And even the Copper River Basin, a little more clearing than what you saw today there. So the snow should be over and uh, pretty dry with uh, partly to mostly cloudy skies through the interior tomorrow. Some areas breaking out again, but uh, should be dry conditions. Light winds continue up over the North Slope and the Arctic coast, coastal areas. And then looking uh, ahead to Monday, we'll see this low center here tracks northeastward uh, quite rapidly in across the southern panhandle. As that comes through Monday, that'll bring gale force winds and rain into the southern coast there. And then actually snow showers will be on the decrease throughout the afternoon Monday as the low center. This next one tracks pretty uh, rapidly there into the northeast Pacific. That's going to be far enough to the south to uh, keep areas from Kodiak Island in across southern Alaska in the mostly clear, mostly sunny conditions there. Copper River Basin right down into Prince William Sound, the Kenai Peninsula. Northern Bristol Bay, mostly sunny skies. No change up over the interior, partly to mostly cloudy skies. There'll be some breaks over here and around, possibly, uh, especially here from the uh, Kobuk Valley out to the northwest coast. There are a few flurries possible over toward Kaktovik to the Arctic coast, generally mostly cloudy, light winds and dry. Uh, very cold air coming across the southeast bearing again as that trough pull, or that low center pulls off to the east quite rapidly. That cold air will be plunging southward. So snow showers and gusty north winds there for the uh, Alaska Peninsula, north northwesterlies. Another system develops here over the northern Bering Sea and that'll bring a pretty good chance of snow and snow showers from the Bering Strait across St. Lawrence Island, right down along the Yukon Delta coast and that trough uh, swinging across the Pribilofs with gusty northwest winds and numerous snow showers out in that area. But lighter winds and uh, drier conditions down over the central Aleutians under high pressure. And looking at the temperatures this afternoon, mostly in the upper 30s to uh, mid 40s here for the Panhandle. Annette up to 44 degrees was the warmer location. In contrast, Skagway had 28 degrees, 31 degrees at Yakutat with one inch of snow on the ground this afternoon, 24 at Cordova, about the same in Valdez, 24 at Seward, 26 in Homer, 19 over at uh, or down at Kenai with uh, Palmer at about 15. Just seven degrees at Talkeetna this afternoon and a little above zero for the Copper River Basin. Northway had four below. Delta was up to one and Fairbanks three degrees. Farther north, uh, 15 below at uh, Fort Yukon with mostly cloudy skies, minus seven and some flurries around Bettles. Then we get into the clearer skies up here over the North Slope and the Brooks Range with Umiat at 25 below and uh, Anatovic at 26 below and actually back through this area temperatures are probably closer to 30 below this afternoon. And then on the Arctic coast uh, all below zero with uh, minus 20 at uh, Atasuk while 13 below at Dead Horse. Barrow had minus 7 and Point Lay 19 below. 12 above at Buckland while Kotzebue was at minus 8. Point Hope had 7 above 
and single numbers in lower teens here through the west central interior areas. McGrath just 7 degrees, 12 over at Bethel and St. Mary's at 18. Nome 10 degrees while Tin City was at 18 and then right there Savunga had 27. Down to the south here over the Perblops, uh, kind of a range there from St. Paul at 33 to St. George at 36. Mid to upper 30s out over the Aleutians, lower 40s from Nikolsky to Alaska, on over toward Falls Pass. Otherwise, uh, 30s here for the Alaska Peninsula. Kodiak 31 degrees and King Salmon 10 degrees colder. Lows tonight, uh, mid 20s to upper 30s here for the southeast coast. Otherwise, uh, below zero, Kenai Peninsula up into the Sitna Valley to 15 to 20 below over the Copper River Basin. And uh, teens in the minus teens to mid minus 20s here over the interior areas, colder up over the north slope with uh, teens here along the southwest coast, 20s out over the Bering Sea. Highs for tomorrow, staying below zero from the Alaska Range all the way up to the Arctic coast and back out to the west into the northwest interior. But mostly in the teens here for the Yukon and Cuscombe Delta, mid 20s for Bristol Bay, 30s again for the Alaska Peninsula, and anywhere from uh, five above to near 20 for the southern interior, and 30s for the most part over the Panhandle. Flying weather, marginal IFR, possible or well along the Alcan border there, and then a bigger batch here off the coast as that next trough approaches the area, sliding on up to the North Gulf Coast. Otherwise, we're looking pretty good VFR, Kodiak Island, Gulf of Alaska, up through the eastern and central interior. Marginal VFR still out here to the west, and then IFR along the uh, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, back up uh, to near Cape Newenham, and then with all that moisture and snow coming down with that low center, pretty good batch IFR coming southwest of the Perblops, bearing down on the eastern Aleutians. Passes looking pretty good, both Anatovic and Attigan will be VFR tomorrow. Lake Clark and Merrill wide open, ceilings visibility is unlimited for rainy as well as windy. Isabel and Mentasta all VFR, Tanita VFR, Portage VFR, but Chilkoot and White looking pretty marginal. Freezing levels here, 2,000 feet just uh, way down to the south there, so that all we're left with now is the freezing level at the surface. Uh, late tonight, early tomorrow morning, coming across the Bering Sea there, across Bristol Bay, near Kodiak Island, up along the North Gulf Coast or just offshore, then on down across the Panhandle. Icing uh, with uh, that big upper low, both at the surface and loft, coming southward, picking up a lot of moisture in the Arctic air there with uh, areas of light to isolated moderate rime or even mixed icing here spreading southward to the eastern Aleutians of Alaska Peninsula approaching the southwest coast, mostly below about 7,000 feet. Some more icing threats out here over the Panhandle one inching eastward there into Canada and another developing here off the coast. Upper level wind flow chart showing the jet stream south of the area there, just south of Kodiak Island, about 150 knots, but diving off to the southeast. General trough of low pressure here up over interior Alaska and then that trough coming southeastward there across the Bering Sea, across the Perbolops heading down toward the Alaska Peninsula. And at uh, 9,000 feet, there's a strong winds, 30 to 50 knots, swinging around to the west, uh, northwest at 40 knots for the eastern Aleutians. Pretty light winds here over southern Alaska, even up in the interior. Southerlies, 10 to 25 knots there for the Panhandle. 3,000 foot winds, light winds for the southeast coast, and light northeasterlies here through the interior, picking up to about 20 knots from the Chuck CC, 40 to 45 knots around the backside of this low center. And associated with that will be a batch of moderate chop from St. Matthew Island all the way down into the central and eastern Aleutians with lighter chop up through the Bering Strait. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Winter, cold, wet, and deadly. Every year, snowstorms strand hundreds of people in their cars, isolate thousands in their homes, and kill those who are unprepared. In this film, you will see and hear true stories about six people caught in severe winter weather and isolated from help.
Ed and Paul Maluski were going to their cabin to button it up for the winter when it began to snow. The storm hit about halfway up the mountain. By the time we got about a mile from our cabin, we kept getting stuck every 10 feet. We were always out digging, which got us wet. Then the snow got real heavy, and you couldn't see five feet in front of you. It was pretty clear the Bronco wasn't going to make it, so we figured we'd walk to a neighbor's cabin. It wasn't real far, and we know that area like the back of our hands. The funny thing is, everything changes at night. With the blizzard, you couldn't tell which way you were going. I thought I knew, but boy, I just couldn't tell for sure. Dad! Leave us back here! We don't need it! There's food in the cabin! You know, it was funny. I'd be thinking real clear for a while, and then just didn't know what I was doing or, or where I was going. I couldn't even remember Paul's name. My own boy, and I, I couldn't remember his name. I got worried wading through that snow. Dad was really beat. He could barely keep up. I started thinking about things I'd never thought about before. I fell and dropped our flashlight and didn't pick it up right away like you normally would. I knew we were getting delirious then. Then we hit that gate. Well, it's nowhere near the cabin. We've gone too far! Let's go back to the Bronco! Paul, we can't go back! We wouldn't make it! I wouldn't make it! We've got to find that cabin or we can't make it! Now, come on! We've got to find that cabin! From then on, I just kept thinking, you got to keep going. you got to keep pushing. I saw that cabin and said one long prayer. I could hardly believe we finally found it. We walked for two and a half hours and it was less than a half mile from the Bronco. All I could think was we had to get inside. We finally got in and then we didn't say anything at all. We didn't talk. Ed and Paul had become victims of hypothermia, a physical condition caused by a person's body losing more heat than it produces. The result, a dangerously low body temperature. When Ed and Paul were outside, the conditions were perfect for hypothermia to set in. It was cold and they were tired and wet. First, their bodies tried to generate more heat to combat the cold. They began to shiver. It was a losing battle. The constant exposure to cold, wet weather defeated this first line of their body's defense. Then, in order to keep the remaining heat concentrated in the body core, the brain, heart, and lungs, their bodies began to cut down blood circulation to their arms and legs. This gave their vital organs a fighting chance to continue functioning. But it also caused the loss of muscle control in their hands, legs, and arms. As their natural defenses gradually began to break down, they became more confused and disoriented. If they had not found the cabin, the cold would have defeated all their body's defenses, and they would have died. In this kind of emergency, the first thing to do is get out of the cold. Then, carefully begin rewarming the body. The most important areas to rewarm first are those areas nearest the body core, the sides of the chest, the neck, the groin, and the head. These are the areas of highest heat loss and highest heat absorption. Warming these areas first lets the body build back and hold its heat, starting with the body core and gradually spreading to the rest of the body. Ed and Paul did not rewarm themselves correctly. They began by warming their hands and feet, and that could have killed them. Warming the body's extremities first forces cold blood to flow back to the body core. The result is usually death. 
Paul went to bed that night shivering uncontrollably because his body had not been rewarmed properly. Both men needed medical assistance desperately. It's a miracle they survived. Part of the miracle was the cabin they broke into. It was owned by a man who believed in being prepared for anything. Once we got warmed up, we found plenty of wood for the fire. Besides, there was a propane tank to heat the cabin too. There was plenty of food, enough to last us a couple of weeks. And you could eat it right out of the can. You didn't need a stove to cook it on. Nothing. Well, they know we're gone. Candles, flashlights, lanterns. All were on hand with plenty of batteries and fuel to keep them working. Ed and Paul even found a battery-powered radio. It was a relief to hear that rescuers were out looking for them. The cabin had a well-stocked first aid kit, too. Ed and Paul were stranded way up in the mountains, far from any help. But even in a city, snowstorms can be dangerous, especially for the elderly. The elderly can fall victim to hypothermia even at home. It's essential for them to maintain warm room temperatures of 68 degrees Fahrenheit or more. Continued exposure to low room temperatures can easily cause older people to become hypothermic. And it is very difficult to detect. Your turn now. They usually don't shiver as hypothermia oh, takes hold. But their breathing may become shallow and their heartbeat may slow down. Either of these symptoms during cold weather means medical help is needed immediately. The best cure, of course, for anyone is prevention. Stay warm all the time, eat well and regularly, and keep physically fit. These factors will help protect you from winter cold. Did you get back to the clinic this morning? Mostly south to southwest winds here at about 20 knots out along the coast. Seas running uh, 9 feet in the north to as high as 17 feet down south. Uh, Stevens Passage, south winds at about 20 knots. And uh, I'm sorry, Clarence Strait, south winds at 20 knots. Stevens Passage, uh, southerly winds there as well. And south winds at 20 for northern Lynn Canal. And then for Monday, those winds swung around to the north. Again, a pretty good low center moving in uh, across Dixon Entrance, so in its wake. North winds 40 knots on the south coast and easterlies at 35 knots with gusts of 50 knots in the forecast for Clarence Strait. Lighter northerlies at about 20 to the north there and much lighter winds up along the north coast. And for Prince William Sound and Cook Inlet, northern Cook Inlet northeast at about 10 tomorrow. 15 knot winds from the northeast uh, from the inlet all the way down across Shellacoff Strait. And uh, north to northeast winds uh, for the North Gulf Coast all the way over to Kodiak Island running about 15 to 20 knots. And then the outlook for Monday, those become northwesterly uh, from Sitkanak right up into the Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay and Shelikoff Strait, northwest at 20. Lighter north and northeast winds here for the North Gulf Coast and Prince William Sound. And Cook Inlet, uh, north to northeast 10 to 15. Bristol Bay east winds at 15 knots tomorrow, but small craft advisories here for westerlies there for the Alaska Peninsula with 10 to 11 foot seas. And then for Monday, got some northwest gales here uh, for the south side of the Alaska Peninsula and 20 knots from the north and northwest here for the Bering Sea side. Seas uh, up to 12 feet here back to the west. And for the uh, Fox Islands tomorrow, we've got west northwest winds 35 to 40 knots and 40 knot winds extending all the way back to uh, ADAC, or I should say gale force winds as far west as ADAC for that low center pulling down from the southeast and then small craft advisories there to the west. And then for Monday, uh, south winds coming up to 30 knots for the far western Aleutians, otherwise winds diminishing to 20 knots for the ADAC Atka area, holding on to some minimum gales here for the eastern Aleutian areas uh, with seas running 12 to 15 feet. And up along the southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, winds east at 15, but uh, north of the island, small craft advisories there, and that extends up to St. Lawrence Island. Gale force northerlies here over the northern Bering Sea and uh, northeast, 35 knots for the Perbaloff Islands with uh, heavy freezing spray here over the northwest Bering Sea right up across St. Lawrence Island into the Bering Strait. And then for Monday, northwest 25 for the Perbaloff, same thing here, south of Nunavak Island, 
lighter winds back up to the north, diminishing to 15 knots or St. Lawrence Island. Still uh, heavy freezing spray back over the northern and northwest Bering Sea, and actually sp freezing spray now all along the southwest coast with that much colder air mass sweeping southward. For the eastern Arctic coast tomorrow, actually from the central areas all the way over to demarcation point, westerly winds on the light side there at about 10, and kind of a variable wind condition here for the western coast at about 15 knots uh, from Wales to Cape Thompson, northeast at 20. And then the outlook for Monday, Pretty light easterlies here, 5 to 10 knots for the east side and southwest to 10 for the central coast. 15 knot easterlies here for the west side and then just a light northeast breeze there from Wales to Cape Thompson. And for tonight, uh, snow showers over the northern panhandle, rain showers down to the south and a mixture in between. Clear and cold south central Alaska, cold and variably cloudy up over the interior. This low tracking southeastward uh, bringing a lot of wind, mostly back in its western quadrant here as it tracks southeastward. Snow showers spreading all the way down to the eastern Aleutians and to a lesser extent along the Alaska Peninsula and the southwest coast. And then for uh, tomorrow, another trough approaching the panhandle increases the chance of showers there along the coast while this band of showers kind of escapes off into Canada there. So you could have some clearing over portions of the southeast coast, mostly dry here again and cold with uh, light winds, south central Alaska, no change up over the interior. Moderate snow showers at trough along the southwest coast and that low coming southward, gusty winds, snow and snow showers from the Alaska Peninsula back to Adak. And then that thing scoots off into the Bering Sea. Another system again brings those gales to the sun. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.